Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful day here in the end times <coughs> in paradise. That would make it Wednesday, April 11th, 2018. So, uh, Wednesday is normally the day that I open up the mainstream media for my climate change meltdown roundup rant to present to you more and more evidence of how this planet is heading directly into a burning lake of fire. The only problem is that if you open up the mainstream media today, at least Yahoo News, and comb through, I guess, about the top 100 stories on the planet in the regular headlines, and then you flip over to the science pages, you will find virtually zero mention of climate change anywhere on Yahoo News on uh, April 11th, 2018. But fortunately, <clears throat> you know, I keep a little file going all week. So between combing the mainstream media for one solid week, and with help from my various lieutenants here on the tribe sending me in climate change stories, I've actually managed to cobble together uh, 10 stories over the past seven days, 10 stories. And several, several of you have sent me various versions of uh, this reviewing this article that just came out in the journal Science about how rocks, you heard it, rocks, uh, are, are going to save the planet from future global warming, that scientists are now thinking that rocks might end up absorbing a whole lot more CO2 in the future than they they did in the past and this is way this story is very technical and complicated and and far be it from me to try to uh, I, I, anyway many versions of this uh, but my favorite one of all I, I can't remember what alert tribes member sent me this unfortunately from investors business daily a startling new discovery could destroy all those global warming doomsday forecasts. This is the prestigious journal and uh, science journal Investors Business Daily. Scientists have just discovered a massive heretofore unknown source of nitrogen. Why does this matter? Because it could dramatically change those dire global warming forecast that everybody claims are based on settled science. And so anyway, in this hilarious article, uh, they try to put this uh, very, very technical uh, article into language that climate uh, change denier investor businessmen could um, could uh, understand uh, <clears throat> anyway guys it, it this is so complicated let's try so anyway what what it is uh, what they're talking about in here is they have determined that rocks are a bigger source of nitrogen available to plants. And so, anyway, getting uh, into the middle of this investor's uh, daily. <clears throat> In other words, with more nitrogen available, plant life might be able to absorb more CO2 than climate scientists have been estimating, which means the planet will not warm as much despite mankind's pumping CO2 into the atmosphere. Yes. Uh, the question is whether any climate scientist or environmentalist 
who are entirely wedded to the idea that industrialization is destroying the planet would ever admit this. That's why that word paradigm is so important. Uh, anyway, so uh, are we looking at a coming paradigm shift in climate scientist? Uh, as we've said many times, evidence continues to show weaknesses in climate models used to predict future warming. They failed to predict a decade-long pause in global temperatures. Uh, nor have various calamities that were supposed to have occurred by now materialized. Yes. Uh, meanwhile, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has been conducting highly suspicious temperature data manipulation there you go. This creates a data illusion. Blah, blah, blah. The bottom line, with their reputations and huge amounts of government grant money at stake, it is unlikely that many climate scientists would ever admit to being wrong, no matter how obvious it became that they were. So if you liked this story, they refer you to three other stories uh, from their prestigious journal. The Climate Change Doomsday just got canceled. The stunning statistical fraud behind the global warming scare. And despite what you have heard, global warming is not making weather more extreme. Okay, guys, I am not a, a uh, climatologist. I am a uh, at least a former journalist with five years of uh, journalism training about how to uh, look at things in a different light. So what we're going to do today, something I very rarely do, we're going to have a uh, we're going to we're, we're going to have a little lesson in the economy of scale. Okay. Uh, again, th th this is just my problem with this. So it seems to me that these rocks that they're talking about that have been there for, you know, maybe a billion years or whatever, uh, have been there for the past 200 years doing what rocks do. So... I, I guess these rocks, uh, the, the, these these rocks, uh, have been soaking up the same amount of CO2 that they've ever been soaking up for the past billion years. Yet, in the past 200 years, the levels of CO2 in the atmosphere are going up, 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 as is the global temperature, as are the number of weather extremes and whatnot. So, I, I'm not sure what these scientists are saying. Are they, are they saying that these rocks have been asleep for the past 200 years? It, it, is, is that what they're saying? That these rocks have been sleeping and maybe when we get to a certain threshold, maybe when we get to 500 parts per million, that these rocks will certainly, will suddenly wake up. So, uh, any, anyway, now, now, it, it is logical to assume, and I'm, and I'm certainly not ruling out with my five years of college and my 148 IQ, that without these nitrogen producing rocks, the temperature might have been, the, the CO2 levels and the temperature, global temperature, might not be as high as they are. I'm not ruling out that they have, uh, that they have some influence.
<clears throat> on it. W without the rocks, and sure as hell without the oceans, the uh, temperature would be a hell of a lot higher than it is today. I, I, I don't have a problem with that. Here's what I have a problem with is the uh, economy of scale. The economy of scale is usually uh, illustrated with something like geoengineering, too little, too late. But a, a close cousin to the economy of scale is too much, too quickly. And, and this is what uh, it has happened in the past 200 years. I have no problem with thinking that these rocks are some sort of way that Gaia uh, you know, regulates the various systems over geologic, geological epochs the planet has figured out a way, you know, to balance out uh, the, the nitrogen and carbon cycles and all that to keep levels basically steady uh, it, it, with the normal background rates of, uh, uh, of CO2 production. But what we've had is uh, now this water is not as hot as it needs to be to make this really. So anyway, here's what we're doing. We're putting some coffee in our little coffee filter. So the coffee are the rocks. All right. So the, uh, the water, God damn it, the water coming out of the pan uh, is CO2 being sucked out of the air. All right, so when you pour a little bit, you know, as you drip a, a, a little bit of, of water into the, uh, into the rock, this is the CO2 coming through the rocks. As long as it's, you know, just a regular steady uh, dripping, the, uh, the rocks can handle it. I need to get Henry Miller out of the way. Okay, so this is what's been going on for four billion years. Okay. Here's what's been going on the past 200 years. That is the Industrial Revolution. Uh, the, the rocks, the coffee grounds cannot handle the overload. And this is what you get, is a big fucking mess, which is exactly what we have on this planet. A big fucking mess because the the these rocks cannot handle the, uh, <clears throat> the, the what, what what we've done to it so quickly. It is called too much too soon. So yes, these rocks no doubt are doing what they can, but we are we, we are an untested. Uh, geological force on this planet. This planet has never had to deal with anything like us. And this is what we're getting, is, is a big fucking sloppy mess. Anyway, I, I hope my high-tech, uh, my, my high-tech illustration <clears throat> of rocks it has helped me. So what I'm going to do, I'm I'm going to I'm just going to make this part one of my of my uh, climate change meltdown roundup rant and come back with these other nine stories in a minute. I hope you have a much better understanding now of uh, of the mess we have made of things on this gorgeous day. Bye guys.